when we debate the kind of roots of the internet and we focus only on the question of was it the government or was it the private sector, we miss this really important thing, maybe the most interesting thing about the story, which is that actually the internet, the web, almost all the core protocols that we use today in sending email um, and a lot of the software that powers our smartphones and our computers was actually created by these decentralized networks of collabor collaborators who did not actually have any traditional ownership or patents on what they were creating who were working in these open forums to, to create these tools. And the world is now dependent on the fruits of their labor, right? If, if, you, could, if you could magically shut down all of the technologies, all the software that had been created by peer networks, the, the, the world as we know it would collapse. I mean, the internet would go down, email would go down, financial markets would go down, airplanes could fall out of the sky. I mean, it would be a global catastrophe. And so that's, that's the fascinating thing about this story about the internet is, you know, if we'd been having this conversation 30 or 40 years ago and I'd said to you, there's a form of collaboration that doesn't involve traditional ownership, that involves people just sharing ideas and building on each other's ideas freely outside of the marketplace, we would have assumed I was talking about, you know, a commune somewhere in Northern California where people were weaving baskets. But in fact, our whole infrastructure is now in many ways created by these kind of peer-produced collaborations. And so, it's important to remind ourselves of that because we have a lot of stories and folklore in our society about the heroic visionary genius and the kind of startup entrepreneur, but we don't have as many great stories about that kind of open collaboration. And it's a big part of our society and it's a big part of where progress comes.